the previous class we have said uh, how the whole milk is being processed. So, in this dairy and food process and products technology in lecture number uh, 41, we come to this level of milk pasteurization. So, milk pasteurization because we have said in that uh, flow chart if you remember that after the milk is received from different sources, then uh, they are tested and after testing if they are found ok, then they are standardized and after standardization they undergo pasteurization, then homogenization and then chilling and then it goes for packaging. And we have dealt this packaging and other parts in detail earlier. Now, we come to individual processes right. So, before we go to standardization let us first look into pasteurization, milk pasteurization of course, this we have said earlier also that the pasteurization uh, word came or this, this coin came from the name of the one of the famous and biggest scientist Louis Pasteur. So, on his basis on his development on his discovery this was uh, given him the honor that uh, pasteurization process anything which is undergoing the process this type of they are called pasteurization right. So, now let us look into what is that right. So, what is milk pasteurization? We say milk pasteurization is the process of milk pasteurization is the process of heating milk or milk products whatever it be to a predetermined temperature for a specified period without recontamination during the entire process. So, lot of things have been said right. So, that means, a predetermined temperature you have to know that which temperature and I always said that this is not only temperature, but also the time. So, any heating is a combination of time temperature right. Similarly, cooling is also time temperature heating or cooling or thermal process is a mixture or is a product of both heating temperature as well as time, cooling temperature as well as time. So, there the predetermined temperature and the time for heating that is predetermined provided during the process you do not incur, you do not inculcate lot of other contaminants or contamination that is a must that during that process you should not get it further contaminated once it is pasteurized. That is why by definition it is said. The predetermined temperature usually depends on the heat resistance of the spoilage microorganism that the pasteurization program is targeting to destroy. So, depend in many cases depending on the locality depending on the initial contamination this depending on the uh, nature of contaminants the target organisms changes right. There are many target organisms out of which one the most favored is Clostridium botulinum right. So, that is one and uh, in many cases microvector tuberculosis also could be, but that is also not that much is heat resistant, but this one botulinum is definitely one where this is taken as and there are many other also right. So, you determine predetermined uh, this you determine in advance that what is your target organism which should be destroyed and if it is destroyed then it tells that all other pathogenic organisms are destroyed and killed. The primary objective of uh, sterilization is to kill the pathogen 
that is the primary objective so that after drinking milk nobody is infected with any disease that is the primary okay then pasteurization is necessary number 1 there is a public health concern since the public is going to consume the product pasteurization kills all the pathogenic organisms or bacteria that may cause infection to consumers so this is number 1 why pasteurization is required that it will since the milk product or milk raw milk or liquid milk is normally consumed all over the world by all over the world lot of people so it is public concern so if it is a public concern then after consumption they should not fall sick that is the primary re requirement for the regulating body to look after that any food product like this milk if consumed by consumer they should not fall under sick or if it is then that company which the uh, consumer is consuming will be taken to the court or will be penalized that is afterwards but first thing they should not be in any way they should not be contaminated or infected or fall sick after consuming that is the first thing so that is what why pasteurization is primarily required right then the other reason for this is that there is no need to ensure that the product can keep for a longer period without expensive storage equipment pasteurization will eliminate spoilage bacteria and enzymes and extend the shelf life of the product so second thing this is one ta one side which the controlling body has looked into the aspect of the consumer then the controlling body also should look into the aspect of the processor because if after processing if it needs severe storage facility severe uh, cost involvement then the entire process may not be commercially viable feasible so that is why next step is that to ensure that the product can keep for long periods without much expensive storage equipment right so it should kill also not only the organisms which are causing the disease but also some spoilage organisms that also should not be there eliminated so that minimum minimum storage facility or conditions good enough to keep it for some time of course it is cannot be claimed that a pasteurized milk can last for several days several weeks several months like that right it is for a temporary period short period where your extension of the life of the milk is given or extended right then the amount of heat and length of time used in pasteurization depends on the thermal death time of the target organisms another thing which we have come across is the thermal death time right so how much heat you need for a given quantum of the milk how much you need to heat that depends on the thermal death time right so thermal death time of the target microorganisms the you have already targeted what microorganism you want to make the sure that it is no longer there after pasteurization and for that you are supposed to look into the thermal death time of that organism that will dictate that will tell you how much heat has to be supplied so you have to then look into the how much energy you have to spend 
right the minimum combination should target the most resistant pathogenic organisms such as coxially barnetti coxially barnetti that is the why again i said target organisms are different for different cases many places many target organisms are set and this depends on the country to country place to place and source to source source from where it is being collected all these factors will dictate which should be the target organism so we said one is clostridium botulinum another is that this one coxiale bure coxiale barnetti right so this target of the organism can be killed by the pasteurization process so you must know the thermal death time of this organism that it coxiale barnet barnetti okay then when deriving the thermal death time of any microorganism the temperature must remain constant and holding time is varied to kill the specified number of cells so lot many words again we have said specified number of cells right so initially you started with a number of cells of say 10 to the power 10 right that was your initial concentration now you want to make it to 10 to the power 3 right so a uh, 7 ta 7 log reduction you want to undertake so in that case you are finding out beforehand what is the thermal death time of that particular target organism and then if you know then you fix up the temperature at this temperature for such time you will be heating so that will tell you how much energy is required right so energy requirement here it is nothing but mcb dt because there is no phase change nothing so right it is the sensible heat right from this temperature to that temperature for such a lot of time you want to heat and then maintain at that temperature so you know how much you have to supply heat or energy so that is determined by the thermal death time combination and you must get first the thermal death time of the organism right so we come to the new word thermal death time so thermal death time or d value is the duration it takes to kill a certain bacteria at a given temperature right so thermal death time normally it is denoted by the term d value right so that is nothing but the duration it takes to kill a certain bacteria at a given temperature right so the time required to kill a organism at a given temperature is the d value right so what is the difference between the d value and another value which is z value or f value right you might have heard this d value z value f value what are they and what is their difference right automatically it comes to the mind then the decimal reduction time that is the d value that is called decimal reduction time is the amount of time under specified conditions to reduce microbial population by one decimal that is one log cycle right log 10 is equals to 1 oh my goodness log 10 is equal to 
तो वन सो वन इफ यू वॉन्ट टू मेक इट वन लॉक साइकिल डिफरेंस देन यू एप टू so we we skipped lot because of that uh, mismanagement of the pen okay the decimal reduction time is that is the d value is the amount of time under specified conditions to reduce microbial population by one decimal right so from 10 to the power 1 to 10 uh, to 1 right Or ten to the power two to ten, so this is one decimal we are reducing, right? Time, the this time varies and is dependent on the temperature and the target microorganisms. So what is the target microorganism that will dictate what is the temperature and how much time it will require? So this varies. on the organism selected one decimal reduction or 1d is equivalent to a population drop by one log cycle or 90% reduction right so one log cycle reduction means 90% reduction survivability is only 10% right so automatically it comes that if sorry if 1d is equals to 90% reduction then what is the reduction in percentage if it is 2d then it becomes 99% if it is 3d then it becomes 99.9% if it is 4d then it becomes 99.99% and so on right so if 1d corresponds to 90% reduction then 2d corresponds to 99% reduction 3d corresponds to 99.9% reduction 4d corresponds to 99.99% reduction now here one thing you should keep in mind mathematically the number is so close that 99.9 purity if you do it there then that 0.1% right 0.1% means 1 in 1% means 1 in 100 so 0.1% means 1 in 1000 right so that means in out of 1000 cells if one is surviving that one is good enough to further again multiply right so you that is why mathematically it appears that 99.9% is killed so or we have achieved it is not because that 0.1% that is 1 in 1000 is good enough so if out of 1000 people consuming 1% will be affected statistically right so that is not desirable so you should not take that chance that it is 1 out of 1000 you will be infected no your target should be as much maybe 10 lakhs people out of 10 lakhs people 1% can be affected or out of 1 uh, crore 1% could be affected so your target should be like that so that will be dictated how many d's you will be bringing or how many d's you will perform right so that is why the d value is so much d value is so much important that to know the thermal dead time this this the decimal reduction time is 
very much important. Right? Next, we see that for example, if the population of microbe, if the population of microbe is microbe X, right? We have taken no num name. If the population of microbe X is reduced to 10 percent by exposing it to 101 degree centigrade for 4 seconds, if it is like that, we denote the d value of the microbe x as d 121. This 121 corresponds to the temperature at which you are subjecting is equal to 4 seconds. So, the time required is 4 seconds at 121 degree centigrade. Right? So, d 121 is 4 seconds that is the thermal death time is 4 seconds corresponding to 121 degree centigrade that is why you have mentioned d suffix 121 right so for spore formers it could be more because spore formers is now again this is out of the way that uh, vegetative cells are those which multiply under normal condition very and which can be killed also with a minimum effort. But spore formers, the other day I said perhaps that that like that like that uh, cocoon is being formed by some of the insects. So, they make a covering out of it. So, that protects it from the surrounding and that unfavorable condition also it survives. Snail is one such. Right. So, these organisms also there are certain which who are spore formers they do form one coating around it and this coating is so much that it is very much heat resistant and it unlike vegetative cells which can be killed with some energy they need much much more energy than that of the vegetative cell. So, spore formers if they are at all present, so you have to be doubly cautious, doubly careful about the killing of the spore formers. So, for spore formers like Clostridium botulinum which is a spore former, the treatment should be achieved by the treatment should be achieved by. So, here you write B and here achieved. Uh, or treatment should achieve okay, should achieve 12 d 12 log cycle reduction in original bacterial population right 12 log cycle reduction. So, 1 d if you remember we said 90 percent 2 d we you remember we said 99 percent then 3 d we said 99.9 percent right. So, with 1 decimal 2 d right. So, then 12 log cycle 12 d will be how much? So, that killing will be 99.9999999999. So, these many right. So, you see out of the remaining one is that 1 minus this 90 or 100 minus 99 this is not 1. So, 100 minus 99.9999 is your remaining. So, that means, 1 out of those times 10 to the power of 10 right. So, 1 out of that you may survive. So, that survivability E chance is very poor. So, you are taking that risk. Of course, you cannot by decimal reduction you cannot come to 0. You never can come to 0 mathematically you cannot come to 0 right. Nothing is equal to 0 for that in the decimal 
So, in the log cycle, then if you are not able to come to 0, then you must come as close. Now, that close is as I said, yes, 1 out of, out of 10 to the power 10, 1 out of 10 to the power 8. So, that is why 12 log cycle is required, that is 12 D is performed for the spore former like Clostridium botulinum. Right? So, this is how z value i d value we are defining. So, then other that is the z value is the measure of the change in the rate of death due to change in temperature. Z value is the measure of change in the rate of death due to change in temperature. It is the change in temperature required to change the decimal death time, right? One log cycle or one decimal, one d. So to bring down one d, what is the temperature required? That will tell us the z value, right? To bring down one d, right? That one d log cycle or one d number to reduce the number by one d, one log cycle. What is the temperature requirement or change in temperature requirement? That is the that is the z value, right? So if that be the z value, then in order so in other words we can say that in other words we can say z value is the measure of bacterial sensitivity to heat treatment. It is the change in temperature that will reduce the d value by a factor of 10. A z value can be obtained by plotting two d values against temperature. Right? So, by plotting two d values against temperature, you can find out the z value. So, another thing value which we said f value, f value is the duration it will take to kill a known bacterial population. So, known bacterial population means you know initially you, sorry you know initially you have 10 to the power 6 number of organisms right. Now, you want to bring that to 10. So, known that 10 to the power 6 that is what we are saying if the duration it will take to kill a known bacterial population right is the f value the duration it will take to kill a known bacterial population is the f value. It is usually set at 12 log cycle or 12 d to kill the most resistant micro uh, most resistant mesophilic spores in a food sample right. So, again another new word mesophilic has come in. So, in this respect let me also tell that there are three types of bacteria population one is psychrophilic then mesophilic and then thermophilic psychrophilic they 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 uh, love low temperature to survive to multiply mesophilic they love moderate temperature to survive and multiply and 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 act whatever actions they have and and thermophilic they love high temperature or relatively high temperature around 45, 40, 50 say 55 that temperature range they do love and multiply at that high temperature. Right? So, the depending on which organism you are targeting your f value, z value and d values are also dependent. So, different microorganisms have different d values. However, the d values follow a negative slope when plotted on a graph. Right? So, we will come to that 
next time because today our time is over. So, next time we will do on T d t that is thermal dead time. Okay? We will try to plot also and see. Thank you.